Okay, you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. No, this is going to be fun. We're just chat, okay? Yeah, yeah. Totally. Three, two, and... Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Friendship Podcast with me, El Chong. With me is one of the most beloved characters, creatures, uh, in not only the sideshow world, the performance world, just in New York in general. The world in general. Uh, uh, welcome, Alaska the Lost Boy. Hello, I'm Shelly Duvall. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hello, I'm Alaska. Thank you so much for having me. No, today. thank you for for <laughs> coming. So we just came off uh, one of our fun shoots where uh, you uh, brought a very comfortable contraption to not only lay on but step on, put your face on. What's that contraption called again? So it's one of the oldest um, acts and sideshow, one of the most ancient accent sideshow and it is made entirely of components from home depot uh it's the bed of nails yeah well uh, you'll see it on your screen right now some behind the scenes footage of or the behind the scenes shots no footage because it's not allowed on, on youtube uh of the the bed of nails and the marks that it leaves uh on alaska's person so well thank you very much for letting me document your new contraption. Yeah, of um, course. You do all my crazy I, stuff. You're, you're am, like my person for that. <laughs> I'm here for it. I am thankful that uh, there's uh, an opportunity to do so. That's why I keep on doing this shit because I want to get better so that you don't uh, disappoint your friends. <laughs> but uh, before we go deeper into Alaska's repertoire of skills and experiences, uh, the Fun Tree Podcast is my monthly podcast on my channel. So if you are not yet subscribed, please do. YouTube.com slash El Jong. Uh, you'll find there weekly live art performances of amazing burlesque, drag, comedians, musicians in New York. I will post weekly, usually uh, Wednesdays on those. And I also have... Uh, a much greater number of camera gear reviews and um, reflections that uh, you guys can learn from, I hope. And if you like any of those, please come back. Um, but also, when uh, I, the, the main reason that I do these things is because I want to not only help support uh, my friends and my acquaintances in the city, but uh, inspiration right um like you see people do feats that i wouldn't even attempt <laughs> it was like why <laughs> why no i wouldn't want to um but uh with that uh it, it kind of like enriches me to do all my other work so please come back uh the fun shoot podcast is also available in all of your favorite podcasting apps apple Amazon or Spotify, just search Fun Shoot Podcast. It'll be there. It's my conversation with light shapers and image makers uh, and uh, their process of art and creativity. So without further ado, I'm very excited to uh, delve deeper into Alaska. So for those that don't know you, we know you're the best. I'm okay. <laughs> three, 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 four people out there might not, but uh who is alaska what is alaska's brand um so i am a sideshow burlesque performer uh i got my start in circus doing aerial um i started training at the muse um doing lyra and things like that and eventually i <laughs> i met a clown in a bar and he convinced me to come over to his house i didn't know he was a clown at the time <laughs> He was just some guy. And he was like, come over to my house on Saturday morning. And I'm like, sure, random stranger. And he, I got to his house and I opened the door and it was filled with ringling memorabilia. He used to be a ringling circus clown. And so he taught me how to do clown makeup and he got me into clowning. And then he built me my first bed of nails. Um, he had me over one night. We watched a bunch of Disney movies and we just built a bed of nails. And then I practiced laying on it and we stacked heavy objects on me. Um, clown Kong is his name. We ran a clown show for a little bit. And through that clown show, I started kind of picking up other sideshow skills. Like I learned how to do, you know, stapling and whatnot. And then I got hooked up into the disaster piece universe run by Anna Monoxide. Um, and I met people like Phoebe Eyewalker, amazing sword swallower and that inspired me to really start learning sideshow then you know lockdown happened 
and I spent lockdown learning how to swallow a sword. And that's when I got picked up by the Coney Island Circus Sideshow. And they were like, oh, you're a sword swallower. Come swallow swords for us. And I said, great. So I've spent the past two and a half years um, just kind of exploding <laughs> into the world of sideshow a little bit. Um, I've made it my full time career now. That's pretty much all I do, um, aside from some like sexy stuff on the side. <laughs> so that's where um, I think our. Uh... I want to jump in. So this is recorded in August 2024. I when the last time I spoke, I didn't realize h how recent all of these things were. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, baby. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll talk more about uh, some of uh, or more in detail the things that you do. But uh, as an audience member, um, everybody knows Alaska. They are everywhere. But they do so many things and I didn't realize those are a few years. So when did you actually, so that first day of bed and nails, what year was that? Um, that would have been early 2019, I think. So that's 2019? five years at the most. Yeah. Yeah. Five years at the most. And you know, we, we might skip a few things, but, uh, one of the accolades that you have, from the most recent hootenanny it was what oh yeah so my kind of specialty act is i do aerial sword swallowing so i swallowed my first sword in april of 2022 that's two years ago two years ago and then six months later i was like i bet i can do that in the air <laughs> so i started doing it in the you're air you're not supposed to do that you're either. not supposed to do that but there you know i i come from a long line of really powerful aerial sword swallowers you know i'd seen it done uh betty bloomers did it um ariel manx did it alex magala did it i actually talked to alex about it um and he kind of helped me figure out the anatomy in such a way that i could do it in the air um so you know it's it's something that's been done uh mm -hmm. and you know a time honored you know maybe not tradition I'm but not from the sideshow world but from lucky hell does it lucky hell's incredible um yeah 2019 to just like oh let's start clowning to 2022 let's start swallowing swords <laughs> even that that progression okay hey people jump into the deep end when they find something that they love i support it cool yeah. <laughs> but from 2022 and then just a few months after 2022 i am just starting to swallow swords now let's just do it in the air that's i think that seems irresponsible but that's just dope yeah it's uh, you know i am because i've been doing this is not something i would have done if i hadn't already been doing aerial for a very long yeah, yeah. time you know i've been pole dancing and doing lyra for much longer than yeah. this maybe eight years nine years now um so when it comes to being in the air i am very comfortable mm. um and i have studied my own body pretty extensively so you know it's not something i went into just like haphazardly like i'm just gonna try yeah. it like i was so i was studious about it you know what i mean <laughs> which again don't try these things at home but don't try this at home if you're gonna try it like make sure you do it with professionals with and... professionals yeah like everything i've done i've had a mentor for you know like hands-on one-on-one very close monitoring you know i've like had the best of the best helping me out like you know adam realman helping me mm -hmm. learn how to swallow swords and stuff was huge huge um where where was I going with this? I don't even no, know. Like, I'm, we're, I'm How like did trying it to just like chart <laughs> out the progression of the origin story of Alaska. So yeah, now we've charted out that you started uh, Ariel and Lyra yeah. way way long before the clowning stuff. Yeah, which was before the sword swallowing. Yeah, stuff, yeah, which is now full blown. Let's just all, all together. The crap well, after yeah, so. you know, I have this thing of like. I, first of all, I just wanted to combine the two things I love the most. Like nothing makes me feel more powerful and more alive than sword swallowing and Ariel. And so putting them together just felt right. And it just makes me happy. You know, some things you got to do for you. Mm -hmm. And I also have this thing of being like a genderqueer performer. Um, when I was just an aerialist, it was really hard to get my footing as someone who's non-binary masculine. You know, people were just like, they'd see me doing pretty shapes in the air and they'd be like, that's a woman and like could, would not hear anything otherwise. And even just as a sword swallower, you know, I get misgendered a lot and stuff like that. Mm. And I just really, I really strive to create art that is so powerful and strange and explosive that people just kind of forget about the gender aspect of me. You know, they can just put that to the side and stop being like, 
that's definitely a woman or something. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like I've been more successful at that in recent years. Um, I do a lot of festivals and stuff and I travel a lot and I, I go to places that aren't necessarily trans friendly and, you know, I'll start off my show by being like, listen, I am a non-binary trans masculine person and there will be people in the audience who look at me and go, we don't like that. And I'll be like, (laughs) but watch the show. And then by the end of the show, they're like, we don't even care anymore. That was amazing. We love what you do. And I'm like, that's, that's really what I'm here to do is like, just be like, look how amazing human bodies are. Look what they can do. No, this gender shit matters. Can I say shit? Oh, yeah. Can I say the fuck, fuck word? Fuck no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's you know, uh, you know, particularly you, but the groups that you are, uh, you know, involved with, which we'll discuss later too, is very successful with that because, like, I myself, um, I, I tackle all of the pol- social political stuff on a different angle because. Uh, you know, I didn't grow up in the United States, grew up in the Philippines, where it's a different kind of struggle that what we'd have. But in the end, it's just like, good is good. Yeah. Great is great. And that's the one thing that every time I, I, I see your shows, I see everybody's shows, it's like, like, you immediately say like, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's in a giant stage with multiple rigs, if it's a tiny back room, which is my preferred venue, yeah. mm-hmm. Freddy's Bar and Back Room in Brooklyn. We love it. Uh, so it, it doesn't matter if you see a person, you know, not only dance sensually and beautifully and then start stapling shit on their body, it's both unnerving, shocking, but it is, you know, however which way you interpret it, it's an experience, yeah. which more and more people are no longer getting people are getting the same things repackaged regurgitated i'm a big fan of the mcu i know it's all just yeah. <laughs> you know it's things to sell merch and keep people coming back i enjoy that yeah we love like just entertainment for entertainment's yeah. sake is great love that but you need <laughs> one of those things where this is i i i was uh when i i've brought so many friends to multiple hot fix vaudeville on the rock shows uh old lucky 13 stuff uh and every time i bring it to them it's like it's going to be so calibrating how it calibrates i don't know (laughs) right some people are disgusted some people are like why yeah Uh, i still ask why it's like why that's so painful kita st Cyr always says uh during their talking show they'll be like you know i i'm obviously here for your applause please you know cheer for me whatnot i will also gladly take your shrieks of horror (laughs) your groans of disgust you know just like just feel something you know (laughs) you know in in the words of the uh uh, american philosopher trent reznor it's like you know you cut yourself to learn how you still bleed and it's like am i saying that right The, the song by Johnny Cash. Uh, it's you see these and you feel feel something, yeah. And you yeah. know that these are dope shit. But you know, before we dive further deep into that, mm-hmm. like, what was the inspiration that brought you here? Like, what? How we've discussed? Like, right? You've been an aerialist. You've been uh, kidnapped by this person and uh, brainwashed to be a clown, <laughs> yes. and then involved in sideshow, but. Um, you know, what makes Alaska Laxa, like the, the inspirations, the motivations around that? Uh, I think it all comes back to, you know, wanting to participate in an art form where I can really just be myself. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first came to New York, I was studying acting and, you know, I was constantly told, like, you're going to be girl next door and your career is going to be over by the time you're 30 and you just have to make peace with that and I was like well that doesn't sound any good to me (laughs) I don't want to be the girl next door and I don't want my career to be over by the time I'm 30 I just turned 30 and I feel like my life is just starting (laughs) and other people that's if that they're cool with that that's yeah that's totally cool you decided that wasn't for you yeah not for me at all Uh, especially the girl part um (laughs) really was not was not vibing with me at all um and I just I just felt like I needed to, I, I had more, a, a different kind of thing to express. You know what I mean? Um, and so that, it, it took a long time to even find yeah. Ariel. I stumbled into Ariel completely accidentally, like totally accidentally. That was the gateway drug to it, all of Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. I, um, you know, I was 
looking for a way to get kind of stronger. I was in a really deeply, um, to get dark for a minute, <laughs> I was in like a really deeply abusive relationship at the time. And I was looking for um, something to make me feel stronger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe I could fight back or something. And I was, you know, scrolling through like class pass, you know, one of those things where you sign up and you can go take class from all these different things. Delightful. It's, yeah, great thing. And, you know, I took a boxing class and that was cool. And I, you know, got a couple like gym things going on. That was cool. And then I took an aerial yoga class. Hmm. And the instructor that day happened to be a former Cirque du Soleil aerialist. And so she was like, listen, I'm not going to run you through the normal aerial yoga stuff. I want to teach you guys real circus things. And I was like what is this and i couldn't even do a pull-up at the time so i was useless but at that time, at I that time do a pull -up, so whatever. okay whatever i couldn't flex, do anything. <laughs> flex but, okay, okay. but yeah i like could not do any of the stuff but i was watching her do the things and i was like i didn't know this was an option like i didn't know i could actually run away with the circus so i pretty much just like turned my life up on its head at that moment and i was like screw everything else i'm like dedicating my time to the circus and that's how i ended up you know uh work studying at the muse so that i could get you know training hours in exchange for working for them and stuff and they that really gave me the the time and the strength to do what i need to do but eight eight so in in total so it's like eight years plus four years so it's just over a decade that you've been doing this like well, from the inception of so uh, eight it, years is really the start of it. Eight years ago, yeah. I I still can't believe that you're you've been able to accomplish this much with such little time because I've always been I've always heard from other people like ten, fifteen, twenty years, and then you catch your groove, and then it's like, but that's just wild. I feel like part of it is working in New York. It's like. If you want to survive here, you kind of have to just like mm -hmm. really hit the ground hard and hit it running mm -hmm. all the time. I also, you know, I I was lucky to have the time and the energy and the space to do things like train Ariel mm -hmm. at the Muse because I had a side hustle. You know, I was a, you know, sexy dancer. Mm -hmm. So I was able to make the money that I needed to take a day or two a week yeah. to just train my ass off. Um, like, you know, that was a privilege in of itself that I, I had those kinds of jobs. That's one of the things that I love tackling with this podcast with my friends, because a lot of people romanticize what New York is. Yeah. And and even if everybody has heard how difficult it is, like if you make it here, you make it anywhere. It's like, no, you can. No. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. It's it's, it's so it, hard. Yeah. I was taking off my clothes and like dirty back rooms and stuff, you know, just to like make make enough to make rent so that I could pursue the circus dream. You know what I mean? Like and, and <laughs> that's kind of why, you know, I love talking to people like you and why most of my friends are in the performance or creative field because I could never do that. I could never commit to something that I cannot plan out my next paycheck. Yeah. Right. So in in a few words, like you already started mentioning that you had to do uh, this work just so that you can free up some time to do. So in, yeah. my, in my interpretation, like a lot of people do not understand people here take jobs so that they can work a different job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So like what sort of advice would you tell other people who is like, Pursuing maybe uh, a passion, yeah, um, or pursuing a passion. Like you know, it's my my angle has always been putting all your eggs in that one basket is not the most prudent thing because what if it doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. So I went the angle. I have a day job so that I can do a night job. Right. So that, that's kind of like, but in my night job, if it doesn't pay, it's fine. It enriches me with friends and art. But for, like for your experience, you've hustled so much for so long through so many things, what would like the advice you'd give for other people around that? Um, I think honestly, figuring out your time versus money versus energy ratio, like, you know what I mean? Like that was key. Like I understood that there was a certain kind of work that I could do successfully that wasn't going to drain me of all my energy and was only going to take a certain amount of time so that I could balance that out with training circus. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, cool. You know what? I'm going to be able to make this amount of money dancing this number of nights at these places. And that is going to free up these days. And I'm going to have the energy left over to do that. You know, whereas 
I like for a while I tried doing other things like I was a barista for a while but that drained mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. in such a way that like I didn't have the energy to train circus because yeah. I was so depressed and so sad because it just wasn't for me it wasn't like that wasn't the kind of job that was like fulfilling my soul that wasn't the kind of yeah customer service I was particularly interested in but I found that you know I really love dancing I do I actually you know I I still take dancing gigs every now and then because I it it does fulfill my soul in a way and it is also like it's very physical that gets me going that gets me excited Um, I enjoy it so and it does actually kind of help that kind of work is definitely like a positive impact on my circus work you know what I mean like the kind of personality skills and whatnot I developed in that industry helped me be a better circus performer. I, I love the the ratio aspect of it, like money, big deal, yeah. time, and I always forget because I I grew up in a world it's like energy that you make that. Yeah. <laughs> so no, but it's important to kind of like factor that in as an ingredient because yeah. that's what a lot of people do not uh, think about or are not experienced with or are surprised when they come up with adulting yeah. things. It's like, hey, you you need to be inspired to do the next thing, whether it is uh, your passion, whether it's a second job, whether it's to make rent, whether it's to make time with friends. Yeah. If you don't have, um, you know, yeah, money, time, and energy, a combination of those three, you won't be able to kind of like push yourself to do other things. So that's very important. Now I'm learning yeah. stuff because I've just recently included energy or rest as part of my ingredient as before it's like i'll sleep when i'm dead yeah now it's like no yeah and it, like you know obviously in this world like capitalism yep. you know and just like i think rest is a privilege uh for sure mm-hmm. it shouldn't be but it is mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> i'm extremely angry that it's a privilege but um you know if you got you like you got to find a way to make it happen or else you'll die and you deserve better than that <laughs> you know what i mean and speaking of of you know energy you're successful in your craft right now and you're still growing and you're still projecting so we've talked off pot about all the fun new gigs that you're getting but what stimulates you like what inspires you what what powers you to just be um other artists 100 percent. yeah like i don't have a lot of downtime but when i do have downtime i go see other shows you know what I mean? Like I am just so inspired endlessly by everyone around me. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, everyone. Um, there's nothing better for my soul than going to see another show. That's awesome. It's always like the best part of my week if it happens. <laughs> That's a great sign that you are in the correct field because, yeah. like, you know, I I love my day job. I geek out about my day job. I read news about ad tech because that's you know i enjoy it that's my kung fu yeah so even if it's not fun or sexy you know it means that there's you know no matter how bad the day is i'm still learning a little bit yeah if you feel that you are like what you mentioned when you're doing your barista stuff and it was draining you right but there are other people like oh they work at at one bar and hang out at a different bar yeah because they like the vibe they like yeah it's about finding what we're like what Mm -hmm. your vibe is what what fill what fills your cup as they say Mm -hmm. i guess (laughs) that's pretty awesome yeah so like if uh um not work related Mm -hmm. right so how do you power down so if other artists inspires you what is your recovery weekend look like what is an alaska no work recuperation day look like none um. <laughs> no Ooh. netflix no ordering Sleeping. food no um yeah uh what do i what do i do um i recently very recently over the course of this past summer when i was a teenager i loved video games mm. i loved them and i just kind of for the past you know couple of years well you know my first decade in new york was just bananas i didn't stop moving um and so more recently i've been finding ways to find downtime and i've been getting back into video games and it has been so nice what are you it's been right so nice i've been playing um the outer worlds oh sweet okay yeah it's basically like space fallout mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm having a blast, you know, I just go get to be a space person running around. Uh, and it doesn't, it took a while for me to get to the point where 
I was okay actually using my downtime for things that weren't work related. You know what I mean? Or things that were just for me. Um, Yeah, it was like near like it really didn't start happening until this past summer. Interesting. Because I was just like I spent a decade in New York just hustling, 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 never stopping. Mm -hmm. And then I had my first, you know, year and a half, two years at the Coney Island Circus Sideshow and started actually getting enough success in my artist career that I could stop doing my side hustle so mm-hmm. much. And so downtime started appearing and I was like, <laughs> ain't that funny? What? Yeah. And I didn't know what to do with it at first. It felt like at first Same. I would just sleep. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to sleep for 10 hours. And I would just pass out for 10 hours and I'd wake up to a thousand texts being like, it's your day off. You, you can finally, we can finally hang out. And I'd be like, oh, frick. <laughs> Sorry, I was asleep. Uh, <laughs> And now it's like, okay, I like, I take an entire day off, almost an entire day off per week now, just to do my laundry, play a little bit of video games, watch some Netflix, eat, eat, I just eat, I eat endlessly, like I just do not stop eating for 24 hours, it's crazy. I'm on Ozempic (laughs) and I still eat, so it's great. Ozempic? Fuck yeah, I'm trying to get sexy, girl. (laughs) You're already sexy. You're fine. (laughs) There's a certain level where I just want my belly to not right now it used to be a real muffin top now it's a muffin top junior a little bit more and i'm happy that's just my only vanity in my life it's just like this this as long as it's really for you uh, no 100 percent. i because you know nobody's nobody's tasting this right now (laughs) they're missing out everyone's missing out um but it's good to hear that you know we're uh, you're enjoying downtime now yeah but still enrich i still be really guilty sometimes i really really guilty you know i i definitely go through that thing of like oh i should be rhinestoning this or i should be working mm. on this act or i should be doing this but i'm also like okay i'm 30 and if i don't baby. take downtime a baby <laughs> baby i'm a tired baby yeah it's true okay I, that's fair that is I'm fair like, i'm realizing that if i don't take downtime i'm just gonna collapse i'm just gonna like yeah. my brain is gonna explode so it's I'm my doing first this. it's my first year in 12 <laughs> years that i work a regular 40-hour job yeah and it's delightful great like wait i can read yeah I can, wait you mean to say if I take the weekend off and not open my laptop, no one's going to die? It's okay. Still like No one's going to die. <laughs> but but I also want to hear about getting it. This is still, uh, you know, primarily, you know, we we collaborate a lot because of photography and videography. Yeah. Um, you know, I shoot the stuff for your collaterals and the performances that you guys do. Amazing. Always. Uh, I, also, I always want to know, like, what has been the most memorable gig that you've done and that's open to interpretation doesn't have to be the best worst most money least money but memorable like the gig that sticks with you um you know we last new year's we did a hot fix show Mm -hmm. for new year's we did a little ball drop thing Mm -hmm. and there were other gigs. There were, you know, New Year's is a hot time for a performer. That's usually when you land, like, you know, your very, very high paying gig. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I just want to spend New Year's with my friends. Oh. And so we threw a little show out at Coney. It was actually a huge show. It ended up like beyond selling out. Um, but like, I was, we were just like, whoa, everyone actually came out to Coney Island during the dead of winter. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we threw the show and I got to spend New Year's with my friends and family for like the first time in 12 years because I have always, whether I've been dancing mm-hmm. or bartending or whatever, I have always been working on New Year's yep. Yep. and not actually just getting to enjoy that time and bring in the New Year in a meaningful way. So when midnight hit and I was standing on the stage and Patrick brought, brought out the cat, John Wick, and I gave him <laughs> a little midnight kiss and you know, Keita, Jack, Obsidian, Maggie, the Stockdales, everybody was all there. We're all there together. I was like, oh, this is what it should feel like. This is what holidays should yeah. feel like, yeah. you know? This is how I want to bring in the new year. Um, it felt really special. Um, yeah, yeah. And I was That's like, amazing. yeah. And like, you know, Hotfix means so much to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. This little, this little group that kind of, you know, we all met and started working together for real. Yeah, for real. describe. So uh, I like Alaska to talk about Hotfix more, but you guys are all very, very lucky. A lot of their performances the past couple of years, I've had the privilege of documenting. I've cut their performances out. A lot of them, uh, 
you know, there's a lot of performances that we cannot share, <laughs> but there will be some that you will at least experience the amazingness of what Hot Fix is. So you'll be better in describing what that troupe is. Yeah. So um, Kita, Jack, Obsidian, and Maggie and I were all, so we all started working together at the Coney Island Circus Sideshow in 2022. Uh, we were all kind of brought together. And Kita already had like a, a circus troupe going on. We all had our own little things mm -hmm. going on. You know, I had Nefarious, my clown show and stuff. But, you know, we ended up forming a full-on troupe that is still going, uh, the Hot Fix Sideshow. Kita is our fearless leader, <laughs> our producer, our director, our inspiration mm -hmm. daily. Um, and so we, you know, we throw shows a couple of times a year. We do them on, you know, New Year's, Valentine's Day. Uh, we do a April summer Fools. show. April. <laughs> uh, uh, Halloween. Halloween. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, our next one is on shoot. I'm gonna have to look up the date for this we will, real quick. We will. You will see it all over this yeah. post. Uh, the next one is gonna be called Ghost Hole. Oh. That's going to be great. Sounds um, very, very horny. Yeah, it's the sequel. I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, in it. I'm, I'm in it doing in it. it. It's our little sequel to the last show we did, Dante's Inferno. Um, Hot Fix does Inferno, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. They just get better and better every time. Uh, and the <laughs> various venues, too. So the, yeah. the good thing about it is, like, um, I've seen one in House of Yes, which is a bigger venue. So it's much bigger, much more elaborate sets. Uh, and there's one in uh, Gemini and Scorpio yeah, uh, and Gowanus. Yeah, so yeah. that was like a li still a, a big stage, but more intimate. And then, of course, the iconic Coney Island, uh, yeah. so, so Coney Island venue. Yeah. Freak show. And of course, show. we, you know, we travel and we, you know, we do hot fix shows around the country, even out of the country. We've done shows in Canada. Ooh, yeah. Which is like great. Um, yeah. But this troupe is just like it's it's so special to have such a tight knit group of people that you work with mm -hmm. and you do extremely dangerous things with like you know we have each other's lives in our hands sometimes 100%. like i you know i'll be doing my aerial swords falling i'll be blindfolded i'll be like jack i need you to hand me the sword while i'm blindfolded hanging upside down from the hoop <laughs> and i'll be like okay <laughs> <laughs> or you know we safety each other's fire acts mm -hmm. and stuff like that and you know we really are just the most special incredible family i'm so yeah so grateful for them it is very difficult like again um you know this community that we we are all in most of the time it's traumatic it's a lot of uh certain toxicities coming in that just par for the course for creative people yeah like artists you, have a lot of feelings 100 percent. like yeah. you need to be delusional to be a creative i am deeply delusional <laughs> you you have to be like yes. uh, i mean that's why you know there are still times that i will not consider myself like a an artist or a photographer because i don't commit like that <laughs> it be, once once it gets difficult i'm out like if you don't like the shit, then tough yeah i'm out but you know if you're a real artist like you obsess you think that you're the best or you think you're the worst and then try to get it's like all of these weird feelings so yeah. emotions are kind of weird kind of wild but to find a group of people that symbiotically kind of like hanks because you know hot fix has been a couple of years now yeah yeah three four uh we're and yeah we're like on our third year yeah yeah i think i think yeah, around like, like three or four so um that's Again, so I've special. seen plenty of, of not even like groups that this big, just like quads, triads, duos, yeah. not last. Not last nearly this long. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, these these are people that have stood by me through my worst and my best. I Like I was with them when I went through just the biggest breakup and I turned into the worst person for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, they they. They, they kept me in there and they took yeah. care of me. You know, it's find amazing. Your people, find your tribe, find your weird. Yeah. Um, that's very important. Again, it, the group gives me hope that, you know, I'm, I'm lucky I have the same, I have a lot of different circle of friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, I might, I always, my line everywhere from my Hinge profile to my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. I might not be cool, but my friends are cool. <laughs> All right. And then me too. Pick, <laughs> pick which one. Do you want like tech nerds? want finance bros so you want my people that i grew up with i have a lot of pocket of friends and i'm very grateful but yeah. for the majority of my time in new york all i've seen was drama in groups and when i see hot fix uh even your little show with obsidian Vaudeville on the rocks, rocks. Uh, yeah 
uh, every third Thursday, fourth, fourth Thursday. Thursday, every fourth Thursday, Vaudeville on the Rocks at Freddy's Bar and Back Room, yep. co-hosting with Obsidian Absurd, The Dangerous Dancing Mermaid. Yeah, like just <laughs> overall gayness and hotness. Yeah, it's unfair. I <laughs> I hate it and I love it at the same time. But every time I see groups like that still thriving, but also blossoming together, because like you guys are yeah. just getting more. You know, production value just goes up and up. Yeah, yeah. The risks just goes up and up. Yeah, because we, you know, we have a, you know, we're such a diverse group of people and like our talents and skills and stuff. And the skill share mm. that happens within mm. Hot Picks in itself is amazing. Like that, I'm so grateful yeah. for. Because you know, like I said, I, you know, I started sword swallowing two and a half years ago. I couldn't do like fire or anything like that. Um, and I just, I've learned, I've learned how to glass walk with them yep. and all these other things. Multiple like, people. Yeah. Put giant nails in their noses yep mm -hmm. i think everybody in the group can do blockhead yeah yep um, we're, multiple we're people like eat fire now yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and yeah it's i for me it's like one of those things like all right there's still hope in bands <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> it's yeah. like it's also it's just like it's good to have like you're working with friends because again if you if you enjoy what you do you're not working as difficultly as other things yeah for right. sure yeah um a couple of other things that i want to discuss is you know again we collaborate through my photography mm -hmm. and my videography i a certain segment of uh the listeners is still photo and video centric and one of the things that i like them knowing is you know how to interact and how to do their shoots so let's start with what if you can remember, what has been your favorite image that either you've seen or has been taken of you? Open interpretation. And also let's talk about like your, your favorite shoots, um, um, kind of like content generating productions. And so that we can, you know, teach a little bit of the people what to do, what not to do when, you know, again, collaborating and sharing and making art. Yeah. Um, Wow, there's been a lot of really good ones. Uh, you took Ooh, me. one of the- I did not pay them. No. I promise you. <laughs> I'm not being paid. I'll pay more you later. <laughs> uh, you took one of the- f I, There's not a lot of photos where I'm looking directly into the camera. Mm. Um, I'm extremely- I know this is going to sound nuts. I'm very camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it seems normal to- Like now I, I've spoken to enough people about- Okay, what's your favorite shot? I was like, I don't like shots about myself. I was like, bro, you're like hot as fuck. Like, right, so, but. but yeah, I, um, I'm very camera shy and I got made fun of a lot, you know, growing up, uh, even as an adult um, of the, like my eyes. Uh, there's been, you know, my nickname in high school was like people would call me like wonk eye and stuff because mm -hmm. like there's something just like slightly cross looking about mm -hmm. them. And I've, I've grown to love them. You know what I mean? But Character. it's what has been helpful about that has been like working with photographers who are like, just look directly in the camera, just look at the camera. And I'm like, okay. And you took one and I, it was like the first one I ever saw that I was like, Oh, okay. My face is okay. <laughs> you know, okay. My face is okay. Every photographer would love to hear that. Oh, my face is okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really hard to like your own face mm -hmm. you know like i uh yeah it's not something i look at it when i have to put makeup on it but i'm, I'm very focused on what my body can do and less of what it can mm -hmm. what it looks okay. like you know what i mean that's just kind of oh, like don't worry about that we'll tell everybody like, <laughs> it's hot <laughs> thank you it's it's a little too hot sometimes it's bothering <laughs> there's a, there's a certain level which i like it's like all right this is good <laughs> this is right? the, then yeah. it's annoying after this like <laughs> god damn it so like, yeah. why <laughs> yeah. but yeah it just like it really it really struck me because i just remember the experience of shooting that shot was so good mm. you know and like you know there's things that you do as a photographer that you know i can name a couple other photographers that i love working with because they do similar mm -hmm. things like james o'connor um thousand eyes photography like you um the way that you make me feel comfortable in the space is not you don't say things like wow you look so beautiful right now like that don't ever do that Good tip. Good don't ever tip. do that. You know, you say things like, wow, that lighting is perfect. Like you're, the way you interact with me, especially as someone who's AFAB and someone who's AMAB, you know, is so appropriate and safe feeling that it, it allows me to sit in a place of comfort in my body. Cause it, I don't ever feel like you're, you're hitting on me or anything like that in space. You know, it's like, it's, it's very like, this is about the art we're making and not about you. And I really appreciate that. Like that feels good to me. That's good to hear, but also very important. And, you know, the only thing that I add to that is 
unfortunately, we all need to keep on learning. Like, yeah. there's, I still, you know, misgender you all the time. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah, but and but the point is, like, you need to be open to be to, to feedback. Yeah. Uh, but also, I mean, I didn't. I was very, very, uh, not necessarily against, but like, I was just like. I, I put it on the side, reading about um, how to make uh, trans, non-binary, queer people uh, want to be referred as, why they want to be called X, Y, Z. So all of those things, it's important for us. And I'm still learning. I'm like a baby in this. But in the end, it's when you're in a, even if it's a, a fun shoot, a collab, a tra a TFP or whatever. Yeah. Technically, that's professional. That is like, you know, and my thing is like, you know, I'm, I'm still a, a warm-blooded young man, old man. And yeah, you know, um, blood rushing through different parts of body, your body, you can't control that. But what you can't control is what you say, yep. how far you are, what you concentrate on, what you need to do. There's time for all the other stuff. There's plenty of of model photographer photographer or plenty of fun to be had pre or post shoot but yeah. when you have your paintbrush on hand or a, 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 a sketch pad on hand when you're taking a photo or a video when it's work, it's work it's yeah. work it's work and it can be fun work but it's work it's work you know right. so again that that took me a while too like you know i'm not going to be 100 percent innocent here like i used to be the oh you're so hot oh oh my god those sips are amazing and then I realized, and like, like, no, that's creepy. I'm, I, it's creepy, <laughs> but also it's, it, you know, my intent was to make people comfortable. Yeah. People are way more comfortable. It's like, tell them, like, don't like your hair. Your 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 boobs are, you know, wonky or, or like, you know, uh, your eyebrows, whatever. Yeah. And that's it, way more helpful, it's, too. It get, it's like, technical. I need to know what my hair is doing. I don't need to know that I'm hot. I know yeah. that I'm hot. <laughs> I, 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 you, One thousand. That's the baseline. So that's, uh, you know, that's really good to hear. And, yes. you know, and I appreciate it. I will Venmo them later. Right. <laughs> One thousand percent. But, um, you know, we'll we'll make sure that um, we'll we'll flash on the screen some of uh, Alaska's favorite images so that y you yeah. guys can see like, some people have a different view of themselves or of their work yeah. like I might have this image as my favorite you might have an extremely different it's not that one is more right than the other they can both be right at the same time yeah the most important thing is your audience right so for me I don't care about anybody who likes the shot on Instagram when I shoot somebody I like the subject. If the subject likes the image, I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah. If they don't like it, I obsess about it. I cry in the shower with my clothes on. Right. <laughs> um, so that's great. Okay. So uh, last few things. Yes. Right. Um, about uh, your favorite. Uh, okay. And I not favorite, but least favorite so that at least people can learn what not to do least favorite gig or photo shoot content generation uh, uh making interaction mm. um and then what made it uh uh negative I, so that we would we can depart away from those types of interactions i you know i could name so many <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I could name so many, but I'm I, rather than getting to specifics of who, what, when, where, why. Uh, well, I guess I'll get into the what a little bit. You know, it comes back to that level of like professionalism. Mm -hmm. If you're hiring someone to perform for you, you are hiring them, and it's like you know you're hiring them for a sword swallowing gig. They are there to sword swallow. They are not there to have sex with you. If they or swallow anything else or swallow anything else. Mm -hmm. If you have put, if you have negotiated sex into the contract that's something different mm -hmm. but if that is nowhere in the contract then don't don't broach that don't broach that while they're working for you yeah. um you know don't try to make that happen instead of the performance you know if they've come to your venue to perform let them perform don't corner them in the back room and try to make something else happen um yeah that's pretty it's just it's professionalism because once again there is nothing wrong with attraction, mm -hmm. I get it. 
people are people. People feel things for people. And that's totally okay. But when someone is there to work, it's got to be about work. It absolutely has to be because that's, it, it's also unfair to audiences, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you've curated an event and you hire someone to come perform. And if that performer is then made to feel uncomfortable, they might not give the best performance that they can give. 100%. And that's unfair to your audience. You know what I mean? Everyone should be able to have a good time. And if you've decided you're like, okay, you know what? I do have like a certain level of attraction or feelings for this person that is working for me now, you know, have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Don't just grab them. Don't just assume that something's going to happen. Don't start making weird comments. Just be like, have a proper sit down. Be like, listen, I know I'm your superior in this. Like, I know I'm hiring you. I know there's a power dynamic here. Let's talk about this. Um, same thing like with photo shoots. You bring someone into a mm -hmm. private situation yep. um, where it might just be the two of you. Please, you know, don't start making weird comments during. Wait till after, perhaps, to <laughs> broach it. And also, you know, reassure them that it's not going to affect your working relationship if they say no. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's really important, especially like I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand how how often we lose opportunities as performers and not just not just AFAB performers, mm -hmm. AMAB performers too. Anyone who's like sparkly, shiny, pretty, whatever, mm -hmm. there are times when you lose gigs because you say no. And it's really important to assert yourself as a safe person to say no to. That's, you know, I think that's key. Um, you know, there have been photo shoots where I've walked in and, you know, there was one where I got walked in, I walked in, I got handed a drink and that drink was roofied. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't do that. <laughs> I feel like, and I feel like I'm saying it's very, illegal too. <laughs> it's illegal. Yeah. It's illegal. It's immoral. It's a lot of things. Uh, I feel like I'm saying very obvious things, yep. but it has, it has happened often enough that maybe it's and not it has obvious. To be said, and you know, it yeah. has to be said again and again. And you know, even I, this day and age, I'm always like, you do know one Facebook one post, Facebook post that's over. <laughs> one Instagram post, like your and the the my my fear now is like it can be warranted, eh, but somebody might just like not like you and put shit like that. But it happens, right. you know. It's 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 happening because it happens a lot. It Unfortunately, a lot. it's like yeah. I I understand urges, um, and the difficulty in the professional setting but that's that's the point the more that you could be an adult articulate the things that you want yeah the better chances that you can get yeah often it's again so are it, you a grown person or not <laughs> like you know just handle it, yourself handle it's your not shit. saying that you can't <laughs> ask somebody for yeah. a drink or something else beyond what you guys are doing yeah i've but, dated other people in the industry before you know what i mean um i'm currently seeing someone in the industry and you know we've had sit downs and talks about what that means mm -hmm. and how that works um and how to make it professional and not make it you know weird yeah. <laughs> so it's totally it's it's totally okay, but consent. I think yeah. that just boils down to just mm -hmm. consent. Like every little interaction, you just need consent for it. It's so important. I know 20, 30 years ago, like you could just like grab somebody's pussy and you're good. Apparently and just run for president. And, and become fine. president. No, but it doesn't work anymore. You, do, you Actually, the good thing of this, <laughs> I didn't realize this till like four or five years ago. Yeah. So like, you just ask nicely. Yeah. And then they'll either say yes or they'll say no. No, and it's or okay. maybe not yet. Yeah. Right? And then what, that's better than, you know, losing Hurting somebody, a person forever and ever. Yeah. Uh, a contact, professional contact, uh, a potential friend, right? Yeah. So that's... And like, think about it like this. It's like, do you want to cause this person harm for the rest of their life? Because, you know, violation of consent is something that can affect someone forever. Like you are putting a negative impact on someone's life forever for the rest of yeah. their existence on this earth. Yeah. Don't do that to them. <laughs> yeah, that, and it's also like usually, uh, you know, people pass along the trauma that you've experienced with other people. Because sometimes like, sure, if somebody caused you pain, you'd more than likely never interact that with that person again. Most of the time, sometimes they're around. Um, but now the trauma is still with you and that trauma is now either being passed to somebody else or somebody else will have a much more difficult time letting your door your doors open your barriers down for them to come in because somebody else did shit. so it's unfair yeah. for 
other people too. Yeah. And also, again, one Facebook post, yeah, one and, Instagram post, you're kind of screwed for life. And I know that it sounds dramatic to be like, you know, someone made a, a an untoward comment about me while I was being photographed, like to maybe group that in with the trauma thing, because like that's, you know, that's that might sound dramatic. However, I want to point out that like when we're in situations like performing or getting photos done or whatever, we are showing up as artists. Mm -hmm. We're showing up in our most vulnerable state. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one who's a performer or an artist who isn't putting their whole heart and soul into it. So when they show up to share that whole heart and soul with you, like take care of it, yep. be gentle with it, yep. you know, show it love and care and safety. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of talk to get to that point. <laughs> no, it's, imp it's important to know, but yeah. you know, I, again, these are both tough, commonsensical uh, but also evolving stuff like now yeah. now again you can talk you can you can talk through stuff you know and you know it might be a no but it might be a no right now maybe yeah. in the future but if you screw something up to gain somebody's trust in any form doesn't matter if it's just if somebody at work screws up it'll take so long for me to give them the opportunity for them to shine again. I mean, listen, Lady Gaga and Beyonce in that one music video, Telephone said it best. They were like, when some mirror is broken, like mm -hmm. it's, I, I don't know the direct quote, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's like, it's it, you can't like repair a broken mirror. I don't know, I'm gonna yeah, have to look it up later. Sure. Just well, Lady Gaga and they, Beyonce, <laughs> they said something really wise. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I, I I feel that I've I've learned like, every time we, we get this is the other thing too it's like we shoot a lot I shoot a lot of of you know friends we have a lot of friends and but we don't really get a lot of time to just like sit down and learn because sometimes we are just having fun yeah get it you know just like enjoying the moment but sometimes like for me this is a very important time for for me because I learned I learned more from what you do how you did do it i was able to communicate how annoyingly amazing those things are it's really really unfair to be that talented <laughs> thank you because like we some some of us have one maybe one and a half things you got too many that's great for you guys because you guys can get to experience this not only all over all the time this is not like a lady gaga thing where you they go to your city once a year no and tickets are not that expensive vaudeville on the rocks is free you can just walk in and watch it and i will be doing you, you all can of staple the tip to them <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's the other thing so that's what i want to kind of like close out this episode of the fun street podcast week with is a lot of fun which is your stuff like yeah tell the people where they can find you and experience the alaska experience <laughs> All right, so uh, I want y'all to make sure that you're going to the Hot Fix Sideshow website because um, we have a website now and it's got our shows listed. You can sign up for our mailing list so you know when Hot Fix is doing stuff. Um, you can usually find me at the Coney Island Circus Sideshow. I do a family-friendly day show there. I entertain children where I can't say the fuck word. I only said it once. That's I said funny. it once on stage. Can't say fuck. <laughs> it's a family-friendly show. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love that show so much. Um, you can also, you know, find me on Instagram at Alaska the Lost Boy. Same on TikTok. Um, I will be doing Six Flags New England this upcoming fall season. So if you want to come up to Six Flags in Massachusetts and ride some rides and come see a show, it's going to be me and Brianna Belladonna doing fire, swords, all the all that stuff. Safety things. Safety things. <laughs> Safety third. And I also, you know, every fourth Thursday, Obsidian Absurd and I run Vaudeville on the Rock at Freddy's. I don't know if this will be out by then, but the 31st, I'm in Helides, which is Cherry Delight's show, which is going to be amazing. That one always sells out. So, you know, try to get a ticket. Um, you can find me at the Gemini Scorpio Loft sometimes. Uh, there's a Meow Squad show, which is an entirely donated show. Uh, all the funds are going to Meow Squad, which is, you know, a, a crew that helps uh, fostered kittens, adopted kittens, whatnot. Um, and that'll be at Coney Island and it's being run by Kita St. Cyr, our incredible producer. <laughs> um, I want to give a quick shout out to a couple other shows in the city that are doing amazing things. Um, I really love Uptown Strip Down. That's a show you got to go to. Uh, the Black Cherry Sideshow is right now it's an all black sideshow located here in New York. So please, please, please go see those shows uh they're incredible um uh you gotta go see anything put on by anna monoxide 
uh, check out Anna Monoxide on Instagram, but her shows are just like the peak of the peak sideshow. Amazing. Incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Boombox Burlesque. Oh my God. You want to see a really good burlesque show? Boombox Burlesque. Go look them up right now on Instagram. You're going to amazing. <laughs> and I will get as much, well, all of those handles and links. I'll put it in the description because I need to go to some of those myself. Yeah. And for uh, sure. <laughs> uh, another thing that like we kind of discussed uh, in the shoot right before we did this is again, we have merch, right? We have merch. A great way to support uh, content creators, small artists uh, is to just like, you know, promote like you know it's free to like it's free to share their uh, their their profiles their social handles and it's also like cool to have cool shirts um alaska has a bunch yeah i have a couple that say alaska made me gay those have been really popular they're cute is there a throat goat <laughs> yet there's going to be a throat goat one very soon i'm getting it drawn up there you go this fall that, that is the <laughs> most one of the most app i just love the the hot fix um uh, the hot fix ones are great yeah so i rock the alaska i was i did not plan this ahead i wear that shirt yesterday (laughs) had i known i worn it today (laughs) uh but it's a it's a cool ass shirt too so i i love those so i will make sure that um the uh the the website for alaska's merch is front and center uh onto the description of the show as well and then check out jonclemente.com slash store i got look at this cool logo it's like a skull, but it's his name. Yeah, it's awesome. So, so if you know, if you don't want to promote me, just have a cool shirt with a skull on it. It's great. It's um, uh, but Alaska, thank you again, uh, very much. Not just for uh, chatting more in my little teeny tiny podcast, yeah, of course. but for all of the artistry that you shared today, shared in our previous shoots, and all the shows that you uh, produce and perform for us so thank you very much thank you um so that's alaska the lost boy i am el john this is the fun shoot podcast thank you very much and we'll see you next month bye